All right, so we have just this one particular package, this package that I'm going to use as a demonstration to, to show you how all of this, this logging works. Uh, first off, setting up logging inside of a package in bids. Now, you can do this in a package that you're creating, a package that you know, someone just handed you, just as long as you can open this package in bids. Uh, if you just right click on this, out in the control flow of the package, you'll see you have the option for logging right up here at the top. So if you click on that, this is where we can enable logging. Now, by default, this is unchecked. I actually enabled it just a few moments ago, but by default, you're not going to have anything uh, enabled here. So if you enable it for the package, just check that box. Over here, you're going to have your different providers, so your different provider types. And this drop-down, this is where you're going to see all of the different providers. And we're going to cover, we're going to touch on all of these today. So the first one that I'm going to choose is for the log provider for SQL Server. And I'll just add that connection or add that provider. Now, the great thing about this, too, about logging in SSIS is you're not limited to just one logging provider. I could throw all, what have we got, six? Yeah, I could throw all six of these into... Uh, oh, sorry, five, can't count today. I can throw all five of these into one package if I wanted. Not something that I really need to do, but I could if I want. I, I do have that option available. Uh, so I've added the provider for SQL Server. Now, I've added it, but I still have to enable it. So it's, it's quite a few steps here when you're, you're enabling logging on a package. First, you enable logging, then you add the provider, then you enable the provider, and now we have a configuration dropdown. The configuration drop-down is just going to be, uh, it's just going to be, say, how it's communicating, so connection manager, basically. So for configuration, I have to add a new connection. And I'm just going to use a connection manager to my local AdventureWorks database. So this package is running against tables in that database, so I'm just going to have it logged to that database as well. All right. Now, one other thing that I need to do really quick, let me start up Management Studio. And move this over. Just need to check if I still have that table there, and if so, I just want to get rid of it really fast. Let's see, that is actually not there, I don't believe. Oh, excellent, okay, outstanding. All right, so I have the, uh, the table, you know, the, the connection. And if I click on details, this is where you can enable the different events. So this is where you're going to look at, at uh, what's happening where. Now, you'll see you have quite a few events here. Uh, you don't have to look at all of these. It really depends on what it is that you want to look at. Uh, you may adjust these as you start to find more issues, you know, if you start to run into performance problems. Um, but I would suggest that you would at least have on error, on pre-execute, on task failed, and on warning. So as long as you have at least those, you should be okay. Now, you'll also notice these on pipeline events right here. The only reason that you're seeing these is because I have a data flow inside of this package. So if I didn't have that data flow there, you wouldn't even see this information. So this is all because of the data flow. All right, so if I click on advanced down here, this is going to show a little bit more detail. You know, I can uh, kind of specify what I want to see and where. You'll see your events, but you'll also notice all these other columns over here, like computer, uh, operator, source name. These are the different columns that you're going to see inside of the SQL Server table. And you'll see that they have them checked. So you can just check the, you know, uncheck anything that you don't want to see. Say, for instance, on pre-execute, I don't care about the computer name. I could uncheck that. I'm just going to leave all the defaults on for right now, though. And just click OK. Now, one other thing here. I'm just going to go back and check. I've noticed in 2008R2, every once in a while, if I enable logging and then click OK, it'll uncheck it for me. So I always go back in just to double check to make sure it stayed uh, that actually stayed there. All right, now, so I've added just a SQL Server logging, just getting rid of something in particular. So now what I can do is if this package fails, which it's going to, because, well, that's the way I planned it, um, 
the, uh, I wish I could say that all the time. If I execute this package, it's going to record all these different events. And of course, the package is going to fail out, because that's what I want. So we can see you know, what actually happens, what kind of information you're going to see. So I'm going to stop debugging in this package. And let me bring over Management Studio. So in Management Studio, I'm just looking at that database that I was connected to with that connection manager, where I'm storing this particular table. Now, the table isn't going to show up there by default. Say you, say, you, know, you, you have this database you've created, or in my case, I've installed my AdventureWorks database. That login table is not there. If I right-click, and because I did just drop it a moment ago, and refresh, it's going to show up right down here. So it creates it automatically once you finally execute a package. Now, in 2008, it's referred to as sys SSIS log. Uh, in 2005, it had a slightly different name. I believe it was something such as SysDTS90 or SysDTSLog90. And I've also noticed that sometimes it will show up under uh, tables, but then other times I've had it show up under system tables. But the majority of the time, it just shows up under my user tables. So I'm going to take a look at what we actually have in this table. So I just did a quick select, you know, top 1,000 rows. Uh, this is going to show us everything that went on during this package execution. So first off, you can see we have uh, an ID for every line, for every row. Then you have your event. So you have some that you didn't see in the options, such as package start. That's just default. It's going to show up every time. And then you have your on pre-execute events here. Over here, it's going to show you the computer name where it executed, the operator, so this is my account that, that I was using, and then the source. Now, this is showing you the source name. Since we have package start, this is going to be the package name. And then we have all these other events right here, all these other uh, objects inside the package. If I scroll down a little bit further. Here we go, just to get some better, uh, some better data down here, better information. See on these source names? You have these different destinations that I had. Um, you can see everything that's, that's firing off in that package and what the actual event is so on error. So you can see we have some errors right here that happened in this upsert destination and this batch transformation package. Right over here, if I scroll over a little bit more, you're going to see your source ID and your execution ID. Now the source ID, this is for each individual object. So every task has its own unique identifier. So no matter how many times I execute this package, the source ID is going to show up the same for all of these different items, all these different objects in the package. 